it was the last time a fucking Champions League winner with dreadlocks and Barry fucking Bryden, who wears glasses on the pitch turned up, you mad old... Football is a part of I. When I play, the world wakes up around me. Uh, these aren't the words of me, your host, Owen Blackhurst, but of Bob Marley. Um, oh, I thought that... You thought it was me? I thought it was, no, I thought it was from my uh, grassroots cover story recently. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, unfortunately, there was nothing that poetic. (laughs) The words of Bob Marley, and the reason for repeating the great man's sentiment uh, to the game he adored and was very, very good at by all accounts is because yesterday, we, Monday Magazine, launched our collaboration with Admiral Sporting Goods, reissuing a famous tracksuit that Bob wore in 1978 when him and the Whalers were living in London and having daily kickabouts in Battersea Park. It's beautiful, and you can go on our socials and see the little film we've made and the shots and have a look and bag yourself an iconic bit of kit it's uh, a great thing probably one of my favourite things we've ever done actually it's fucking fantastic and imagine, imagine so, if someone said that as a kid that you'd be doing that it's like so with exciting. Bob Marley it's fucking so cool it's actually no, so it's not, exciting no. welcome as ever to reminding you why you love football a podcast that tries to make sure the sun is always shining Mm. And no matter how shit a week you've had, every little thing is going to be all right, apart from these three wankers round the table <laughs> with me. So, joining me, Owen Natural Mystic Blackers today, are Seb, Easy Skanking White, yeah. Tommy, Crazy Bald Ed Stewart, yeah. and Jamming James hey. Burke. Hey. What you were, 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 he's jamming. Do, 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 do. Yep. I want to jam it with you. You'd be a fucking really annoying jamming. jam maker. <laughs> Oh, oh, have you seen, oh, have you seen yeah. my produce? I only use the best strawberries. And I hope you like, says the man who fucking We're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming. I hope you like jamming too. Woo! I hope you like Birdo. I hope you like Birdo. Today is also the anniversary of Big Joe Jordan being squared oh. up to by little Gennaro Gattuso in the San Siro. So it's probably worth asking, after all the love of the Bob Marley stuff there, which ex-player would you least like to square up to? To Kevin Bird. Muscat. Yeah, I think he's a bully. I reckon I'd have him. He's Seven. a horrible man. But uh, square up to like because Joe Jordan clearly Gattuso thought, "Who's this old man?" Joe Gordon yeah, yeah, yeah. glowered at him, and yeah. he went, mm. "Yeah, the answer's yeah, yeah. still Kevin Muscat." Okay, Seb. Uh, I, I'm still having nightmares about Billy Whitehurst, to be honest. Oh yeah, so it's hard to top Billy Whitehurst if you listen back to one of our earlier episodes. Mm. Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, James wanted to listen to that because he wasn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming. I hope you like jamming too. Don't listen Woo! to the ones I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, for me, oh God, I don't know. Yeah, go on. Oh, who? Roy Keane, surely, Owen. No, uh, <laughs> no, no. Honestly, Pete Vieira. Yeah. He's just too big. Like Roy Keane, I'd give myself a 50% chance of beating Roy Keane up. Especially now he's old and got a bad hip. Patrick Vieira, mm. it's like... Do you remember when you've played against people that size? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're so much, they're so difficult. You can't get round them. Recently, right? recently. yeah. You can't get yeah, round yeah. them. Terrifying. Enough about your grinder. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, what, you are now you're on field? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you on field? Yeah, not anymore, but yeah. What is field? It's about you, it's about your kink. I was talking to someone about this the other night. You put your kinks in. Oh, someone was telling me yeah. the other day that they, that two of their, two of her best friends met on there and they're getting married. Brilliant. Yeah. Is there, me and my future wife. You make a list of sexual preferences, not just kinks. But, yeah, yeah. but a lot yeah, of it is yeah, kink yeah. based. It's yeah, described yeah. as the kink based app. And how would you know, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> You've been in love. You're married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're married. Uh, I hope I'm a German. <laughs> is there a imagine section? Seb going. Imagine Seb <laughs> yeah, going yeah. on there. Yovel. Yeah. <laughs> Non-league football. Saturday, three p.m. <laughs> <laughs> what? But what's your kink? Have you, ne- you're have you never been to? <laughs> you're a, I fucking love you're a ninety six. You never been to Uish Park? <laughs> God, this is silly, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's good though. When someone said the other day it was like being at uni, <laughs> I think I think it's more like school. <laughs> we are four point nine on Apple, five star on Spotify. And we are part of the ACAST Creator Network. Hello, this is the voice of Tommy Stewart, not Owen Blackhurst, as you probably know by now, if you have listened to this podcast. This week, it's a very special Mascots of the World Unite and Take Over, as we invite on an Irish playwright, Ender Walsh, and this is his 
Mascots of the World Unite and Take Over. Mascots of the World Unite and Take Over. Thanks to Mark Carolan, who emailed us in from nowhere and, 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 and introduced this story to us, and, and well done, Tommy, for following that up. Set the scene. It's the, uh, it's the run-up to Italia 90. Jack Charlton is... Island manager, he's already very popular after after eighty eight, and um, you're twenty one years old. So where do we go from there? Well, a mate got in touch with me, and he said, um, he said, do you want to do you want to make four hundred quid a game to watch sort of like to be the Irish ma- mascot? In nineteen ninety, four hundred quid. I mean, yeah, which is basically sort of, I mean, I don't know, felt like sort of ten grand yeah. this week. It was, like, it was crazy. <laughs> So, so I was like, um, what? So what? I've got a, I've got, and he's going, yeah, they're, they're putting out this new mascot. It's McCool. It's an Irish wolfhound. Got to worry, an Irish sort of like wolfhound head, sort of hairy sort of arms and legs and all this. So basically like a Spanish man with sort of like, you know, and, and sort of shorts and, you know, um, you know, socks and go out and look at the game and you get 400 quid. And I said, I'm, fucking, I'm on. Because I was on the dole at the time and I was a wannabe writer. I wanted to write. I was sort of like, I was like a sort of like an anorexic James Joyce sort of little round glasses one there. Very sort of, but really, really sort of, really, really a pain in the hole, really, I guess. But like sort of with my Dubliners and reading fucking Joyce and all this sort of carry on. So I was like, so I rocked up, put on the suit, and I was there in the sort of Lansdowne Road, put on the suit and put on this fucking hilarious head and went out. And then watched all the sort of the run up to it, like so... Jack Charlton was like, you know, a god. And that team at the sort of back of sort of 1988, the European Championships, were sort of beloved. And so very, very excited about sort of like 1990. So it was the lead up to that. So I think we were playing, I can't remember because it seems like so long ago, maybe sort of like fucking Russia or sort of like our England or da, da, da. But I watched all these matches through the mouth of this dog. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and sort of like and part of my sort of thing like every every mascot I right, was sort of like I came out with a team and I run up and down and I like acting the sort of fucking ghost the dog you know like fucking up and down to the sort of the sideline and then at the sort of, I did a half time but I had this thing where I would urinate on the opposition <laughs> fucking goal line <laughs> which was which was sort of like really but and all of it was all of it was really ridiculous, as sort of mascots are, but I fucking loved it. And no one knew who the fuck I was. I mean, my parents sort of, knew, I think they were horrified. They were like, oh my God, <laughs> he's on the dole, he's dressing up as a dog. And, he's sort of like, and then I told them what I was getting. They were going, geez, that's fucking, that's a lot of money. I mean, it's like, I, I think my dole was 25 quid a week or something like that. So, so, but then after the sort of, after the game, I got to know the, I was in the corner and there's a little sort of pub in Lanzar and I was very sort of cute. And the teams will come up after the game. And I got to know the team, the Irish team. Like one of them came over and said, well, boy, you And I was going, oh, and he's got he's the fucking mascot. And there was so, so much do you get? I said, I get 400 quid. And he goes, fuck, they were getting 300 quid a game. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's Steve sort of son and all these fucking guys were going, he's fucking, he's getting fucking, you know. Steve, can you believe that? So when I got to sort of meet all these sort of <laughs> all these other sort of like Gascoigne and shit like that. I saw Gascoigne pour a whole pint over his head after a game, which was just one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> it was so great. And I'd forgotten about this. And the, but, the, 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 anyway, but someone got in touch with me last year about it. And I, and I told my wife she was fucking like, she was, she, she, she thought it was a joke. And because I'm a playwright well-known in Ireland or whatever, people just thought this is, and Ed Walters just had a fucking laugh. <laughs> and why is he owning up to this? This must be really embarrassing. <laughs> but I'm like, fuck that. This is like, this is the happiest time of my life. <laughs> and how long did you do it for? I did it for, I did it right up. I didn't sort of like someone else, some other dog went to sort of like Italian 90, right? Oh I couldn't God. for some reason. Oh, okay. Can't remember what, but I did. I got the I got the job of going around these sort of like pubs in Ireland and around Dublin, these fucking car parks with sort of marquees. You know, you can imagine just a fucking. And I swear to God, I was like Jodie Foster in the queues. The amount of times I was groped by sort of like by women and men, sort of like as a dog yeah. <laughs> in car fucking parks hell. and shit like that. Amazing. But then I think I think the last time and the last appearance I had sort of like as the dog, right? Opal, who were the sort of, you know, mm, supporters yeah, of, yeah. Of, yeah, of Ireland, they were saying they're opening up a car factory and Jack Jordan's going to be there with the head of the sort of football union, blah, 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 the head of RTE, you know, our broadcaster. 
no, will you turn up? And do you turn up, you're going to get like fucking whatever, another 400 quid. <laughs> going, yeah, no problem. So, so I rocked up, put on the suit, fucking stood behind him waving, you know, like with sort of like, <laughs> all this sort of thing. This was just, I think this was just after the 1990s. So it was just, people were like fucking, like adore Jack Charlton. So we left, the, sort of the thing was done, and we came out to this little village sort of nearby, which is, well, it was a village back then called Scaries, just outside of Dublin. And uh, we got sort of split up, and I ended up going into a pub with Jack Charles and by myself, right? Oh, fuck. And, I was sort of, yeah. and it was an empty pub. It was sort of like, it was a really weird, it was like a Tuesday night or something. There was no one there. <laughs> and and uh, there was a pool table, and he went, God, he said, well, I guess we sort of, fuck, we'll just wait until they find us, sort of carry on. <laughs> and uh, so we had a couple of pints of Guinness, and we started playing pool. And he was a very good pool player. And he said to me, he said, so do you want to do this all your life? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, you know, I really want to be a writer, but I have no idea how to go about doing it. So I think I want to be sort of a writer. And he said, oh, fair to you. You know, well, well done. There, 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 there. And all this sort of carry on. <laughs> and then we just sort of, <laughs> and then I just started talking to him about like sort of Italian 90 and stuff like that and sort of how it was. And I mean, it was a really beautiful moment. It was a really like, oh my God, I'm with the most famous man in Ireland now. And sort of one of the most famous men in sort of, in you know, football yeah. at the time in the world because Ireland did so well, and uh, it was a, it was a really it was a it was a it was a classic classic moment. And then I just retired the dog after that. They retired me. I just sort of, you know, <laughs> I, you, I, I outgrew it. What can I say? When you were in the when you were in the pub with Jack, you didn't still have the bottom half of the suit. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Yeah, no, you know, wouldn't it be fucking great. So I wish I, I was there. It was in a sort of like it was in a sort of like a little plastic bag, a little carrier bag, you know, sort of underneath the, you know, underneath the table, sort of underneath my pint. The head poking out. I don't know where the fuck the head was. Maybe the head. Maybe it was a sort of the head was pretty enormous. Honestly, it was like it was like putting on a sort of like a Vauxhall Beetle on your head. And dog shit, it's fucking huge. <laughs> oh my god it's such a good story i was i was gonna ask quite like uh you know a question about what it was to be like around your heroes but the bit that you've just said about like you know you were you were completely invisible in the classic question of what would you do if you were invisible for a day and you've just yeah. gone pissed on the opposition's <laughs> goal man yeah. you, could, you could have chosen anything to do being invisible but you've just chosen to go and piss on the goal man I know, so good, and sort of giving, giving, fucking, giving the opposition the fucking V sign, you know, like fucking. I with mean, your little paws. You, yeah, with the paws. Did you? Yeah, did you have paws? <laughs> no, weirdly, this dog had hands. I yeah. mean, I got, it doesn't Brilliant. make any sense. Brilliant. <laughs> I'd love to know that. I'd love to know the, where they started. Firstly, who came up with the idea for it to be a wolfhound as a mascot? Yeah. Because there wasn't as many mascots weren't as prevalent at this point. They've become very prevalent now. But like at the time, I don't think I don't remember like loads of mascots in the 90, early nineties no. when I was growing no. up. But I'm, imagine the thought process. Oh yeah, he's got to be a wolfhound. <laughs> oh well, he's listen, be called... well, listen, well, listen. As Englishmen, you wouldn't realise that the Irish wolfhound is, is part of our mythology. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I like do. in yeah. mytho in mythology, it's sort of like it's this incredibly heroic character it's not someone that looked like that fucking thing it's like a child <laughs> drawing a child with adhd who sort of <laughs> who took up sort of sewing and just created this weird <laughs> i mean it was a really bad costume i swear to god i mean i'm sort of like i think it's you know when you hear about people sort of passing out in that sort of tube because of 50 degrees and shit like that i mean thank god there wasn't any heat in ireland because <laughs> I was the hottest fucking person in Ireland. That was, and that was going to be my question actually, because we've always spoke about mascots and and different costumes and all this, but we haven't actually spoken properly to someone who was actually inside it. When you go into these pubs in the middle of the summer, how oh hot God. is it, and and how how do, how do you drink a Guinness on the sly, or do you, you do you have to hide off in a secret in the toilets or something, or do you just take the hat, head off and just down that Guinness? <laughs> when, when I was when I was doing, and one day I'll I'll write about it. You know, I should really write. But I mean, I mean, honest to God, I mean, like going around those pubs and those sort of like outdoor <laughs> sort of like car park pubs. <laughs> I mean, it was like going to war. It was sort of like, and I was, I mean, I'm not ashamed to say, I was drunk for half of that because I thought, it's the only way I'm going to get through this. Yeah. And, and, and it was hot. Yeah, that's true. It was sort of hot. So it was like, you know, it was like it was, it was middle of summer, Italian 90, and even sort of in Ireland. 
So, but, <laughs> but I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, they weren't sort of built as sort of um, for comfort, those sort of things. <laughs> it's I remember a, it's a, a lot, a lot of chafing. And did they, a lot of chafing, did they, um, did they make you give the costume back when you, when you, when you hung up the head? Yeah, I don't know where, I don't know where it ended up. I, mean, I was sort of like, I was thinking about it today and I thought, oh God. It would be great to sort of, I'm sure I could, I, I'm sure I might be able to swing it though. If I can get in touch with someone and say, if that still exists, I swear to God, I'll run around and sort of land down road. And, you know, I'll pay. Imagine that, the, ret- the return of McCall. <laughs> I'll, I'll give them a grand, I'll give them a grand. I'll give them what, I'll give them what I fucking, like, what they paid me back then. And that's another thing. I wonder who fucking decided that the mascot would yes. get more, more than, than the players. players. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh well, that's it. I mean, I mean, the players were livid, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. I don't think mascots get that now. No, no. no. Thank you so much. Fantastic. That's perfect. Really. Uh, thank you, Ender, you, mate. Yeah, and if uh, maybe we'll um, maybe we'll commission you to like maybe write write about it for the magazine at some point, and we'll we'll, we'll go deeper into the um, the the, t- the tours of the pubs and the marquees <laughs> and the car parks. It's a very Mundial story, and one uh, yeah. one one we'd like to read more about. I think that'd be great. Sure, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, lots of love. To all you. Have a good weekend. Brilliant. Thank Cheers, you. Andy. You too. Thanks you too, mate. Bye-bye. Brilliant. See you guys. Bye-bye. 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 Like he retired the head, we may have to retire <laughs> mascots of the world for a bit. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, it's the fucking it's... wolfhound. <laughs> yeah. I had a I had a friend who was a wolfhound for a bit. I say a friend. <laughs> what? I've, my what? Do, my a friend who had a wolfhound. No, my dog had a wolfhound God, friend yes. for a bit. <laughs> I yes. had a friend who was so wolfhound. And he was sort of my mate as well. Yeah, he loved yeah, yeah. me. Oh. So one of the places... It wasn't Ender, was it? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Dublin. No, one of, the place, one of the places... I, or I used to walk the dogs before the fucking RSBP stopped, made it yeah. Leeds only. They, um, <laughs> we just started bumping into this fucking big wolfhound and his owner. And I, like, he, he used to get so excited to see us because he yeah. knew Big was in the car. He'd just come up. Like stick his head through the car window. Oh. I've got a four by four as well, so he'd be like, just stick it in and just fucking do a big lick of my face. I mean, his head was fucking unbelievable. They're amazing dogs. I mean, wow. t- quite tragically, his owner died quite suddenly, and Deefa's Deefa's back with his with his mom at the um oh. at the, oh. the Wolfhound. Um, what you call it? Well, shack. The Wolfhound stud. The Wolfhound shack, James. That's what I'd call it. Yeah. <laughs> I at the Wolfhound shack. But honestly. <laughs> Yeah, he chased Biggie around everywhere. He nearly, he nearly killed him about five times. Oh, I mean, well, he thought he was—he thought he was the size of a cat. Yeah, right. didn't know, didn't know his, course, a classic yeah. didn't know his own strength. Mm. Oh. Well, a bit like Hodor. I've got a funny, <laughs> I've got a funny story about like Wolfhound though. We were t- we talked recently about me working with my dad on the courts. At the court we were doing it at tennis courts. This is not uh, it, yeah, yeah. Not, not Dennis at, White Senior was not, a not in the yeah. court. I remember getting out the, my dad's van, just walking out, and all of a sudden, in the distance, just seeing this what I thought was a horse. You know, we come in this lovely, big, long gravel track, which I thought, what the, what the is that? And it, you tried to put a bet on it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. And I just see it. It's all, and then it, my, it honestly, it yeah. goes in slow motion towards me. It just bounds and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm this is when I'm 17, 18. So I'm just, I've, I've, I've spurted. You're not, you're not Sebi Toxic. No, I'm no. not Sebi Toxic. I've spurted. So I'm, I'm quite big. You're a big stick. And this dog just comes up to me and I, and I assume within like the last five seconds I go, fuck, this dog's coming straight for me. And not in an aggressive, not an aggressive way, just bounding and pulls his legs at head everywhere and it just sort of puts its paws on me and the sheer force of it knocked me clean off my feet. Clean off my feet. Well, well, wow. Difa was 80, and it was 87 kilos. And then licked me to death. Licked me to death. Yeah. Softest, softest uh-huh. dog. I've if ever I lived met. in, if I lived in a cold country, yeah, like or, you know, like I'd have like a, a wolfhound and a newfoundland and stuff like that. Just, oh. I just have an army of giant dogs. Oh, oh, and I was, oh, can you imagine it? Well, you wouldn't be able to come near me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'd be like that Daniel Radcliffe picture. Exile dictator. <laughs> Is that real? I think it's off a film. Magnificent dog. I love Great. Them. Oh, they magnificent are fucking, beasts. They are. I'm so. fucking you must have to they? have a carrier bag for the for the for the poos. Like. For the turds. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a lot of be a lot of shit. Yeah. Which, you know, swings and roundabouts, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shits and turds more Shits like. Shits and turds. <laughs> Mascots of the world unite and take over. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thanks, Ender. Really good. <laughs> Mundial joins the dots for football culture. And that's not a boast by us, but the words of an actual subscriber in our most recent reader survey. Why not see what they're on about and have a look at Mundial magazine. 100 pages of global football magic released four times a year. It looks great, smells great, and the writing isn't bad either. Go to mundialmag.com or follow the link in the show description to find out more.
We support these. We support these. We support these now. We support these. We support these now. Sebastian Dennis White, who are we supported on why? We are supporting Lauren James. Uh, and I apologise in advance for the chelsification of this podcast continuing. <laughs> but um, I think there is a number of reasons why we support Lauren James. And I think there's a number of reasons why we should talk about Lauren James. Firstly, it is a privilege and a pleasure to watch her week in, week out. I think we have to sometimes just enjoy the good stuff and enjoy the good things and go... When do you not enjoy the good stuff and the good things? No, no, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's always stuff on social media. Just enjoy. I, I genuinely enjoy it. When she gets that ball, yeah, there is honestly that, like, anticipation, excitement, because mm. you just don't know what she's going to do. I'm not over-egging this. There's almost an expectation now when she gets the ball. I was, I've seen her recently in, in quick succession, and it's just... The way she gets the ball and the way she like, rolls her studs over the cro- uh, over the top of it and it's like, what's she going to do next? <laughs> Is she going to dart? Is she going to take it past me? Is she just going to stand there? Like the other day, she just stood there waiting for the defender to do something, to go first. And it there's just a real joy to it and there's a real fun about it. And the reason I wanted to talk about that is not just because, A, she's great, because it's very easy. Anyone can sit here and say Lauren James is an incredible footballer which she is, it's, it's obvious to everyone. Um, and uh, Emma Hayes, who is always, always about the team, even she cannot not speak about the, the, the outrageous talent she's got. She's getting, more, obviously, because she's so good, she's getting more and more media scrutiny. We saw what happened to her in the World Cup when she got sent off and all the abuse on social media that she got. I think that with, with the increased scrutiny and the, and the people expecting things from her, I just want people to not forget how joyful she can be and not... There's a real genuine, like, world, not just world-class talent, but a different talent. She plays the game differently to pretty much every female footballer. Right. She just looks different. She acts different. She plays different. And as soon as she just decides to ramp it up, go into fourth or fifth gear, no one, no one is stopping her. And I think the key thing is we should enjoy that as as football fans, but also protect that. Because I think... She's going to get more and more scrutiny. Seb, as someone who watches a week in, week out, and I want to yeah, ask yeah. this question here because it's a... So, I've watched a lot of Mo Salah. Yeah, quite, yeah. A, quite a lot in the flesh, a lot on TV or whatever. When you yeah. see him in the flesh, the thing that's always surprised me about Mo is like you get that sense of anticipation when he gets on the ball. But also, there's times when he can suddenly look like he's never kicked a football. <laughs> oh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Like, yeah. He, like he'll, he'll fall over, he'll do a weird dribble or something, but then two minutes later he, he rinses the entire team and sticks it top corner and you don't know how he scored that. Whereas someone like Messi never looks like he's mm. never cooked a football. Yes, that's football. such a good point. But what about Lauren James? Is she is she more in the Messi camp of it's like always liquid or is she no, more no, in the no, Salah no. camp of it's no, still no. a bit unpredictable or, or whatever? Just, the unpredictability is part of that anticipation and excitement because she might just might just roll off her foot and it might just whatever it might not be get it right every single time and that's the thing with Emma Hayes has been on, on her for the last 18 months is consistency consistency and, and again she has got be- more consistent and more effective certainly more efficient it, well but, in, in, within that then if she's got more that. consistent more effective more efficient has that robbed a bit of the no I, no I think because there's still that balance there and I think yeah. even Emma Hayes she, Emma Hayes is all about the team and there's honestly that Chelsea team is there's a reason why it's won three, four titles in a row. It's probably going to win the next one. It's probably going to win the FA Cup again, and it might even win the Champions League. There's a re- it's only Barca that will stop them. I like a lot of nights out for you, that, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but there's a, the, the whole team is brilliant. But, and I love players like Aaron Cuthbert who work their fucking socks off and are just excellent, but there is just genuine joy watching and, and, and do you James. And do you get the sense, because I sort of like watching... The, the Women's World Cup last year. God, they, all these tournaments come so quickly. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, back, back, back and forth, men's and women's oh. World Cup and Euros for the last fucking eight years. No, that's exactly. been yeah. a gap. And then there's Confederations Cups and you're on yeah, yeah. clocks and stuff like that. It's non stop yeah. football, football, football. RIP, yeah. the on clock. Cup. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, not this year, but maybe next year it's still around. It's like Seb's in charge of the global football. <laughs> <laughs> Just football, football, football. There cannot be a day yeah. on God's green earth when yeah. football is not played. Yeah. What's that Mitchell yeah. Webb sketch as well? I repeat, all the football, no, all but, the time. But do you get the sense from the other players on the pitch, and it's a it's a team stacked with talent, yeah, and obviously yeah. Sam Kerr's out at the moment, so yeah, yeah. do you get the sense they, they want Lauren to take the responsibility and they look to her as well, especially with Sam Kerr? Right? Yeah, I think so. I think, I, I think so, and that's only going to become more apparent as... You know, now they've really got used to Sam Kerr not being there. But 
they all speak about her in different ways. You know, Leah Williamson isn't one for um, gilding the lily. Yeah, really, because she's um, she's she's a brilliant talker, isn't she? It's very. Awesome. She said yeah. she's like a cheat mode. You know, <laughs> and it's almost like you just assume that she's going to do it, and and you should. Just, oh, okay, that's just what she does. Again, that's probably my point. We should support that, but also enjoy it and go. Actually, yeah, that is what she does, but it is fucking brilliant. Let's not just. Breeze past it, like she did Breeze's past defenders. Um, <laughs> there's two things that I want to say. The first thing is that I'm really happy of how she's progressed over the last three, four yeah, years yeah. because we profiled her in our 2020 <laughs> Vision <laughs> magazine and said that she was one of the players in nice. the world to watch. We got, Looking back, we got a lot right in that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's Weirdly, the, no ghost, one, no yeah. one the ghost it. issue. Because no, this no is... one read it at the time, and I don't think anyone liked it, even no. us by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Postscript, <laughs> like the, for anyone who doesn't know what we're on about, in before COVID, we did an issue called 2020 Vision, where we looked at the fucking 186 things amazing, in, in football that terrified or fucking excited or whatever. And we went through everything from stadiums to fucking young players to fucking... Tech and to games. tech and blah, 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 future goalkeeping coaching. It was a very different issue for us, but not one person's ever said they liked it. But anyway, James, sorry. Um, so that's first thing. The second thing I did. is... Um... You weren't reading it then, you were just pretending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, 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 second <laughs> thing, the second thing is essentially a question, but I've spoken to a couple of friends, female friends of mine who play football recently about this, which is that... When I, especially when I watched Lauren James during the World Cup and when she got sent off and the frustration that she clearly had in that game, um, I feel that she's almost playing a generation ahead of a lot of the other players that even she plays with at Chelsea. Mm. So as an example, when Rooney came through at Everton and he played with his heroes who were his footballing heroes and he got in the rondo with them for the first time and said, you know, these aren't as good as I thought they were. <laughs> no, he didn't. They, he said, these, these are fucking shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The, like a similar time period is when you had Cristiano Ronaldo playing in front of Gary Neville. But not Gary Neville is, you know, won mil, all the trophies, et cetera, et cetera. But they're different generations yeah. of footballers. And watching yeah, yeah. Lauren James play, the runs that she made, the control, what you're saying there about the stopping of, hmm. of, of the play and waiting for the defender to make the move. I thought she looked a little bit frustrated for England at yeah. times because she was... And do you think Rooney was maybe the same like, with, like, with his red card? Maybe, yeah, yeah like that, a similar thing. Mm, it, the, it, the, I like. I think the Rooney. Component. I think it's different. Yeah. I think Rooney was generationally ahead of that Everton team, but as soon as he went United, he found his level. Sure. Whereas yeah, sure. With, with 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 the women's game, because it's moving so quickly, yeah. this is you this probably is... get four or five generations in a team. Th if this, you've right. got a thirty-eight yeah. year old centre half and a nineteen-year-old Lauren James, for instance, this yeah, is yeah. exactly what I mean. And the yeah. the, the female my female friends who I mentioned it to were like, yeah, you can because it's progressing so quickly. The game, everything yeah. about it is progressing so quickly. That is happening quite yeah, a lot. Yeah. It's it's like in here, isn't it? It's like, it's like you've got, go. you know, you've got some old, you know, the old broadcasters over that side yeah. of the room, <laughs> the old war horses. You look over here. It's, it's exactly like that. It's, 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 yeah. Weathered. Yeah. Weathered. Yeah. Weathered, yeah. <laughs> but, but some of them don't start looking like David Beckham, what you said the other day. I still can't stop laughing about that. What, his new face? Yeah, yeah. He looks awful. The cat man. We, the we cat. Talk, this, is, this is what we support these now was originally about. Exactly. It's, a, it's taking a moment in time and not doing it based on something that happened at the weekend, but just Ex going, hang on a minute. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Taking a pause and just going, look, enjoy her. And, 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 and if, you, if you haven't, for whatever reason... Been to a women's football game. If you're going to go and do it once or want to do it once, just go and watch Chelsea because they are the best at what they do at the moment. But also go and watch, genuinely, go and watch Lauren James because I do think if she does get looked after and and things like that, and maybe Emma Hayes leaving might not, you know, might slightly jeopardise that because, yeah, she, there's not, not a foregone conclusion she was going to be this sort of player. She didn't really, oh, really? play for Man United yeah. week in, week out. It wasn't like she was at Man United, but there was a talent there and Emma Hayes has obviously grown. So it's not a foregone conclusion. So hopefully she'll be doing this for years to come. But I do think it's one of those times where you just got to go, look, enjoy this and, and appreciate it for what it is. Don't get too, you know, because the stuff in the World Cup was was mad. And we've seen that happen with male football, all footballers, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. You know, we saw that happen with Rooney a little bit. You know, all of these, we're just in, let's let's just take a pause sometimes and enjoy it and and don't, Agree, don't get mate. sucked into Do the Do you madness. think, um, what's the what's the future old for you to go abroad? I'd be extremely surprised if she doesn't go to the NWSL at some point. I think I was uh, I rather saw, than rather than a Spain. Well, Barca are obviously the, the you know Lucy Bronze and Kira Walsh there as well. Um, who's to say that other English players won't be joining? But if you are going to leave England, that's probably the only club you'll go to. Mm. Well, especially if you're leaving someone like Chelsea. Not, not Leon. 
Leon has still has still got it, but you go into the French league as well. If you're going to do that, you're going to go to Barca. Have you yeah. just called it Farmers League, Seb? No, 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 not Farmers <laughs> League. I'm, yeah, I'm joking. No, no, no. I think if you're going to go to a league where it's going to be pretty standard domestically, yeah, but you're going to be playing at the New Camp or wherever. Her brother Reese. He he's always said that when they played together in the garden or kicked mm. about or whatever, he's always said that she was better than him. Wow. He's always said she's far more skillful, her touch is far more better, her brain, footballing brain's better than, than mine. Reese has always said that. Cool. Yeah. Well, his dad's a coach, isn't he? And I'd imagine yeah. the, yeah. the one-on-one stuff she was doing with Reese throughout, because even if she yeah. was better and had a better touch, at some point physically he would have of course. developed quicker. So do you know what I mean? And that's undoubtedly helped her. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, he's he's a big he's a big cheese in the the James's dad. He's a big cheese in West London football circles. A big cheese. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Le, Grand, Le Grand Fromage! Le Grand Fromage in West oh, London. Oh. <laughs> fucking hell. The big, old fucking massive cabin bear knocking around West London. A big, a big cheese. Nigel, Nigel James, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a bit he's yes. got his own coaching score and stuff like that. But they are big yeah. cheese. A great, <laughs> I haven't heard that in ages. There's, some, there's a great picture of them, of both of them, isn't there, playing for King, Kingstonian? Yeah. And it's just like it's amazing that. Adventures, Adventures in Club. Pubs are chucking out. We're walking down the street. Should we go to... Yeah, come on then. And we're off. James has got his base loafers on. <laughs> Seb's got his top off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy's straight to Definitely the Definitely not going to get in. Uh, Tommy's <laughs> straight to the smoking area. Owen's just been knocked out by the bouncer. <laughs> are, you, are you telling Spot me up. that we're uh, we're off for an adventuring club, lad? <laughs> I am, James. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! And um, this adventure... Oh, it's certainly adventure. Nightmare. Oh, yeah, maybe. But I'm going to leave uh, James Bird to talk us through it because he has very strong feelings about this story. And um, James, let's go. It's 2012 in North London. Barnet, to be exact. And uh, 12 games in. Yeah. In League Two. It's winless in 12, rock bottom. Oh. Enter. <laughs> A man... Who has won the Champions League? <laughs> <laughs> who retired two years ago, 2010, after playing six games in total for Crystal Palace. And he's got a sensational pair of glasses. Everyone uh, knows um, who it is. <laughs> Not yet. It's Edgar David. Is it? It's Edgar David. Hang on, he played for Palace. Yeah, he played for oh, six... that's, that's where Seb's got stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's reading the he script. Played, <laughs> played exterminate, six. exterminate. <laughs> Computer says no, no. I never knew. No. Played, played six <laughs> games. Just strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed, Ed, yeah. can you bring the air wrench? Said <laughs> brain needs putting back on. <laughs> He's forgot that Edgar Davids played six games for Crystal Palace <laughs> and his foundations are crumbling. <laughs> Look at him, you can see it going like the, like a fucking like a blown up council block going down behind his eyes. <laughs> Just fucking crumbling into his fucking <laughs> <laughs> Kids all around going, fuck me. Yeah, yeah. He used to know stuff about his football. <laughs> That's good, though. That's very good. James, so, back to Barnet. So, the, oh. the story goes that, that, of course, David's played for Spurs a couple of years before that, and he, he loved London. He kept a base in um, South London. He was turning out for Brixton United, the Sunday League team, and helping with their coaching. Imagine and, that. Yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking. Mad twat. We are talking. At, we are talking here about a man, you know, nicknamed the Pitbull, who is in love with football. So he's going to do mad things. He's going to do mad things. Edgar Davis joins the club as a player manager. A guy called Mark Dobson, who is the person that he's actually sharing the role as oh, manager yeah, yeah. with. So ima- that always works. Imagine, yeah, yeah. imagine <laughs> sharing the role. Oh, we're going to be of, we're going to be joint managers, are we? With, with Edgar Davis, like when Paul Roy, Paul Roy um, Evans got done by Jed Hulier. and Jim and Michael Scott on the office didn't in work. the in their first game. Yeah. David doesn't play himself. He stays stays in the dugout with Mark, and they lose. Assessing. Assessing. So by the time <laughs> by the time his uh, his playing debut comes up the week later against Northampton, he picks himself, makes himself captain, <laughs> and, from the front, didn't and they win four <gasps> nil. Now. I think that this is, you know, that David's at Barnet is a story that people have heard before. But the reason that I wanted to tell it and the reason that I'm doing this today is because I vividly remember I was in my third year of uni. I yeah. remember a football focus segment yeah. from Mark Clement just before before his first game. So the scene sets and Mark Clement's walking through the 
the veins of Barnet's ground. On the hill. Fucking hell, they loved a walking yeah, shot, yeah, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they he, 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 Kevin Day at fucking Palace yet again. Yeah. He walks he walks down and he walks into the home ground and there's there's uh, David's shirt and he picks it up and he, go, he goes, you know, he goes, Ajax, Inter Milan, yeah. <laughs> uh, Barcelona, Tottenham, Crystal Palace <laughs> and Barney. Yeah. And then gets to the shirt and picks up the shirt. We then cut to the bar before the game and it cuts to um, the first The first thing you see is a load of teenagers going, Edgar Davids is a bee. He loves Barnet. That's fucking Then great. we cut to an old man who goes, you know, he's like, what do you think about Edgar Davids being yeah. at Barnet? And he's like, oh, well, I'm used to this kind of thing, being a Barnet fan. <laughs> Are you? Are you? Are you not? And then the last. When was the last time a fucking Champions League winner with dreadlocks and Barry fucking Fry did who not wears glasses on the pitch turned up? You mad old cunt! And then the last <laughs> Barry Fry did not win the Champions League. The last of the trio of interviews is just five pissed Dutch blokes going like, "Yeah, we obviously came to support ah. Edgar, but um, also we love Barnet." <laughs> Where were they from? Wales. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a load of Dutch fans who travelled. That's fucking great. As as well, it also shows. Um, it shows highlights. <laughs> shows highlights like Edgar Davids highlights of the game in this four minute sort of yeah, VT yeah. the first one is him just fucking giving one of his own players an absolute bollock and his glasses are coming off the second one is him just wiping out a Northampton player who does a sp- <laughs> like 360 spin <laughs> mid-air um, and then there's a little interview with him as he comes off the pitch and, and yeah. all of sort of Davids teammates are walking past him and Clement as the interview go- goes on and they're just like yeah Edgar and Edgar's like you know, we've got a great bunch of players yeah, here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really think that they shouldn't be at the bottom of the league where they are. We're going to work really hard to, to do this. So they're, they're rock bottom when he arrived. And he gets them out of the relegation zone, I think, after two-thirds way through the season. The game before their last game, they lose and they drop back into the relegation mm. zone. And then Wimbledon stay up ahead of them and they do get relegated to the conference. Mm. And everyone, I think everyone at Barnet was like, that's no, that's that. Like, Edgar David doesn't want to play in the conference. Edgar David does want to play <laughs> Yeah, of he does. Bastard knew he would. What did he say about staying in the conference? You just you just want me to do the accent again so you can well, tease me. What I was going to say. It was all right his second time. Oh, yeah. It was American. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I was going to say, that one, one of the things I love about James is his un, is unwavering confidence that on a podcast where the other three people have demonstrated they're quite good at accents, <laughs> he keeps on bumbling through ones that sound nothing like the others. But, yeah. but do you know what? Just fucking does them anyway. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I admire that. Good they're, they're not great, the accents. I felt like that Although I did do three bit... different ones for the little yeah, VTs yeah. and the, the, the... I love the kids. Football so focusing. The, your, your English ones aren't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> And, and let's what we're being from and, here. Let, and let's let's be brutally honest as you know as as a player from a, a Dutch national team player him playing in these orange black stripes with his orange um, glasses, glasses yeah, yeah. and his dreadlocks like he looks yeah, he fucking did. wonderful yeah he looked incredible he looks wonderful um, anyway in the conference his first I think he starts to get a bit frustrated yeah. in the conference his first eight games first eight league games he gets books in all of them <laughs> <laughs> And then he gets three red cards in the space of five games. Because if you, the thing is, what you'd hope for, wouldn't you, that Edgar Davids, going into the conference, he'd just sit at the base of midfield yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. and no one could get near him because he'd sure. just play one touch. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, 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 he's no, not doing that. No, he's overrunning no, the ball, no, fucking no. clattering no, people, yeah, yeah, exactly. fucking steaming him with elbows. Yeah, so this is now the 13-14 yeah, yeah, yeah. season. By, I think, January, um, he leaves, and they're about 10th in the table. But I think that there's loads of mad stories about it as well. In the first season... There was a, a fans coach broke down on the way to Aldershot or something. So he made all the players get off their coach and that coach go and turn around to pick up the fans. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that had broken spell, down. Yeah. By the January of 2014, it it had become <laughs> mutual consent. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we say like yeah, we've yeah. we've had fun here, we've had an adventure, like you've you've had a good time and you've really you know, you've brought the sort of international spotlight and on, on our club and you clearly love us and we love you, but um Brilliant. I went on holiday to Spain as a as a kid and they do you remember like the fake Oakleys they used to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like to to I wanna say it wouldn't wouldn't have been Euros actually. It would have been in the sort of late nineties. What would it be? Potatoes. Potatoes, yeah. <laughs> Potatoes. <laughs> but I remember I remember asking my mum and dad if I could buy some orange Oakleys. And then going back to England yeah. and then showing and up at the um, training brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, for summer pre season wearing my orange I mean, orange it's, oakleys. it's the, you know, despite it being for an actual medical reason, it is, yeah. it's the oh, peak it's... accessory to be wearing. It's incredible. It's, it's... Well, no one else has, has they? They looked cool. Yeah. They did, yeah. yeah. 
Introducing The Hattrick, a new subscriber newsletter from Mundial. Each week, there'll be three stories linked by a theme. Stories from islands, stories about people, stories about heroes, stories about villains, stories about love, hope, despair, joy and, of course, goals. Go to mundialmag.com to sign up to The Hattrick now. Ins and outs, outs and ins, on we go. Ins, I'm going to start with um, Tommy Stewart. Uh, my in this week is the Wu Tang Clan documentary of Mike's and Men, which was originally aired on Showtime. Nice. Um, I think for my money, and I know I've said this about a documentary before, the Van Hal one, which I love, <laughs> but it's the it's a documentary series, four episodes, one hour each, and it just has interviews with every single one of them. See, it's family. interesting this because I think it's shit. But come on, do tell you? Me. Yeah, tell me why you think it's good, and I'll tell you why I think it's shit. <laughs> because. Okay. The one where we're all sat in the cinema watching. Yes, yeah. yeah. That, I think that's the thing I loved about it because it, it goes back to them, and then when they're crying, when they're talking about oh, old dirty bastard, like and ODB. some of the archive footage yeah. stuff I've never seen before. Like there's some, yeah, I like I like the bits Go of the on, cinema, I like some of the archive footage. Go on. I think it's clear the Rizzer has produced it because yes. he comes out of it very well. He does. Yeah. So none of the bad stuff gets talked about. Yeah. And I think they gloss over. What happened to old Dirty pretty criminally as well. He goes from being looking like young old Dirty Bastard to being... And then he gets out of jail and he's, and he's, he's fat bigger. And, he's fat and dead and they yeah. don't talk about it. So for that, I thought it was a bit uh, hagiographic. And I had the Fair same enough. conversation with Owen because I've watched it and I'm not obviously familiar with loads of their work, obviously. Because yeah. I'm a <laughs> guitar man, guitar <laughs> only. No, no. Get the guitar. I thought it was quite good, but I remember having Owen saying exactly the same thing to me. Fair. When I, afterwards, because obviously I, I asked Owen. No, I take early. the point. But all Seb said to me for about a year after that was, I thought you were bringing the ruckus home. <laughs> James Bird. Yeah, my in is uh, buying training tops instead of uh, shirt. The design is often more interesting, so they're allowed to get away with more. All the mm. collars are slightly like high. Yes. So you've got like, almost like little mock neck collars. Yes. There's a Club America Nike one long sleeve that I've been looking at. It's like 30 quid instead of 200 yes. the shirt would be. Ugh. There's like, yeah, there's like a Barcelona like quarter Get the grease grease. Barcelona like <laughs> 08, 09 quarter zip one for 50 quid. Oh. There's like an Ajax Addy one, red stripes with a hood. So I'm, I'm into this. Shirt's great, but you can often see quite a lot of people yeah. in shirts. But if you go a little bit deeper and get, oh, no, get the training it. tops. This is it. And you can wear them as keeper shirts, I found. This is I it. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Trade. This is it. Long yeah. sleeve, little mock necks. Well, you can wear them for anything. Yeah. It could be your gym top. You can oh, wear yeah. cricket training. For bed. Hey, training. Not yeah. for bed. What all our listeners should know is that <laughs> Seb, the fucking mad twat, <laughs> instead of wearing something nice and cotton around his balls at night, or instead of sleeping naked to air them, Seb often wears polyester football shorts to sleep in. He does, because I've shared 100%. a sofa with him. Yeah, 100%. It wasn't oh. a sofa, was it? It was a bed in the uh, Alps. Sofa bed. Yeah. So for bed for I occasionally days. do that, but with boxers underneath, not just the shorts. Oh, no, no. Let, 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 oh, let the boys free. Let the boys free, but wrap them in man-made <laughs> You never know when you might get the call up, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Yeah. Uh, you do. It's the same day every year. <laughs> every year. <laughs> Armistice day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seb's own personal Dunkirk. Um... <laughs> And where do you go for these training tops, James? Where's your go-to place? Is no, it? It's, it's classifiable shirts. Yeah. Brilliant, James. In. All the ins. Treble ins. Treble ins. Yeah. Seb. Uh, I'm going to say independent record shots, but... Do you have a record player? No. Okay. I don't. This is, But this is a thing. Really? I don't have I'm a record surprised. player. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and to be honest, have I bought many... He's got a child. Have I bought much? You can't have a vinyl collection and a young and a child. Fair, but I think fair. in this day and age of like, Amazon and, and online shopping, independent shops have to be a bit more proactive and stuff. But Banquet Records in Kingston have... Jamaica. <laughs> Banquet Records in Kingston have, have been, in I would say, over the last three four years, been putting on gigs within Kingston, whether that be a church in Kingston, whether that be the local nightclub. And they've really developed quite a big thing now. The Who have, been, have played there. I mean, I, I, I'm going to go... You're going to Idols tonight, aren't you? We're going to go... Yeah, exactly. So Idols are playing there tomorrow. I've seen Jamie Webster... 
and Griff Rees in a church in Kingston. But I think... Class. Pray, it, just praying yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> no pray. Jamie, what have Not you been doing since you started nights. singing the Liverpool song? Oh, yeah, I'm, different I'm a, nights. Me and Griff Rees are missionaries. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, not different nights, but what I think it does is show, I think it's really important to support independent shops. No, I'm with you. It's difficult. It's difficult, but I think like stuff that you're really passionate about and really like. Yes. I've gone to see four gigs. I'm going out to independent you go to an independent record shop, putting on four gigs within the local area to support it as much as anything. I wouldn't, yeah, I on think some. In, in, in. I'm putting Bob Marley in. I know we spoke about him at the beginning, but what this has allowed me to do, I think like a lot of people, I had a Bob Marley phase, but mine went quite deep and quite wide. And I remember buying a, a, a box set of four CDs from Tower Records in Amsterdam in 1994, which is about the most Bob Marley thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tower Records. Yeah, I'd been touring coffee shops and bought these, and that, that led to me going, you know, Seb's favourite album is Legend, and that's okay, and it's, it's, a, it's a good joke. But then for years, you sort of listen to it every now and again. But doing this collection has led me to go go deep again. And it just reminded me how once you get past the radio-friendly version of Bob Marley, what an important artist he was and what amazing songs he mm-hmm. made. So I'm yeah. going to ask you all, what is your favourite Bob Marley song? James. Um, I would. I love Redemption song, but it's not that. It's Could You Be Loved because uh, I used to go from the age of 16 to a, a weekly party in Wolverhampton called Blast Off. At the Civic, I, I've, I've also been. At the Civic. Nice. And in the back bar, it was called, they played sort of, instead of playing like Landfill Indie, they played like 50s, 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s stuff basically. Yeah. And they always played Could You Be Loved as as the as the booze was getting to its peak and sort of it was me, my mates and mostly old people in, in the back Little, room. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like but, <laughs> but Could You Be Loved? Yeah, Seb doesn't believe in it. <laughs> no, no. You, I, 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 Mine would be Is This Love? Beautiful song. Breaks my heart but makes me happy at the same time. There's so many, isn't there? Yeah. I know it's a big one, but yeah, that's the one that comes to mind. Oh, and yours? I, 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 because I've been listening to him a lot again recently, I don't know. I used to Give love, us a cool one. I used to love, it would have previously, I loved Trench Town Rock. Mm. Um, and I would say at the moment, because I've been listening to a lot of the albums again, it's either Easy Skanking, which is the first song off the Kaya album, or a song called Coming In From The Cold, which I've been, which I've listened to. It's one of the songs that wormed its way right to the top of my top 100 on Spotify last year. I listened to it a lot. Bob Marley in... Okay, thanks. Um, I'm going to put sandbaggers in quickly. I'm going to do my act. Go on. Uh, there's someone waiting outside the studio for us who's been hanging around all day, who's tried to sell Tommy studio <laughs> space while we're in our studio, and he's hanging around for Seb. But I'm going to go out instead of Seb and tell him to fuck off. Because <laughs> I don't like things like this. <laughs> Dictator I may be, but I'm a bloody loyal one. Uh, so, oh, sandbag yes. out. Right, next. Can, Can I, I change my out and just join you with that? Because I think I'm no, still... No, you can't. Tommy. <laughs> Yellow card. <clears throat> the mental brutality of darts, playing darts, pub darts. Uh, I play darts a lot, as anyone who follows me on Instagram might know, probably twice a week at the moment. Have done for many years. It's Go fun. around there anyway, night, Wednesday night of the week and uh, Stuart's hanging out of treble 20. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Never treble 20, I wish. <laughs> but I was, I was fucking... I was unbelievable... Like, I can be unbelievable on a Thursday and then go and play a couple of days later and just gone. I've never known. Like, I admire darts players so much because it is... And imagine doing it with all, thousands of people watching. It is such a fucking difficult game where one thing in your mind can just kill it, just totally kill your form. Kills me. You're not black and white enough mentally, that's why. It's like, I'm getting there. It's like golf. I'm getting there. Mine is the boom of nondescript former players. Like who? For no reason. Like Nathan Collins coming back to Wolves. Didn't do anything wrong. Played for us for a year. Yeah. <laughs> it's bizarre. We'll, we'll have forgotten he ever played for us in five years. <laughs> just getting fucking absolutely panelled. Yeah, yeah. Not even do something funny. It wasn't funny. It's yeah, just yeah. like, he, 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 I don't even know him. Yeah. Uh, out, I suppose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm going to ask that, you know, you have a serious consideration about your outs next week, James, <laughs> Seb, because this could be a ban. I think that's really good. Well, we're not still talking about it, are we? If it was any good, we'd still we're be talking about it. Oh, here he is. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, Se- it's, uh, it's Sebi a... Soapbox. <laughs> no, it's, I thought that. This week, my out is um, people getting oh, a bit arsy about swearing at women's football matches. Now, okay. I fully 
I've, and I have spoken this and I've written about this. It's so there is a. This diff- sounds like a man who's called someone a cunt in front of his twelve year old. No, 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 no. Very recently. No, 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 no. I was talking to someone the other day, a respected journalist in it, in Jesse Jesse Ooh. Parker Humphreys. Yeah, she got told to stop swearing, and she basically turned around and said, "It's not the fucking theatre." Now, oh. which. I agree. It's a friendly environment, and I've spoken about it. I've written about it, but also there's a little, there's also you know a few swear words here and there. Aren't the be a bloody end of the world? Are they? This is also because you take five badly behaved twelve year olds to watch every (laughs) Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You think it's so? If you're going to give them three pints each before the match. (laughs) (laughs) No, honestly, Ava, it'll it'll be fine. It's right. My dad used to do it for me. You hear people (laughs) criticizing. Uh, booing women's players and stuff like this. It's got. It can take some bits from men's football and still be a, a brilliant, yeah. a brilliant yeah, yeah. thing. Definitely, you're right. Also, you wouldn't shout out the theatre, but yes, yeah. Oh, you would. Uh, Type of theatre is burning yeah, yeah. take you to. <laughs> He's behind you. <laughs> some, 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 <laughs> oh God, there's three of them behind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't even know what I'm saying in our act here, so let's just say this has been reminding you why I love football. Seb has just had an out-of-body experience. Um, it has been a long day. Yeah, it has been a long day. Um, we've recorded this at Spiritland, as ever. We um, we love it here. Ed is now a permanent fixture in the booth, and if he's not here next time we record, there is going to be a fucking riot. Yeah. <laughs> Although we are about to be offered a very good deal out there. <laughs> <laughs> Please rate review share tell people about it fucking like please please do some reviews but we should for the amount of people who we know listen to it oh, yeah. we should have more reviews and if look if you can't be asked that's fine but you give us like there's people reviewing it in the discord every week just pop it on apple yeah, pop yeah. it on there yeah. see ya bye 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 Reminding you why you love football is a Mundial and Football Co production. Produced by Tommy Stewart and Seb White, hosted by me, Owen Blackhurst, and recorded on the run.